Good afternoon. I'm Pat Thurston. I'm your host. I'll be with you till 3 o'clock this afternoon. As uh, most of us know, every year here in Sonoma County, there is this gathering of the elite. Anybody who is anybody, it seems like, uh, in the highest echelons of the military uh, industry, uh, uh, what, what some call the corporatocracy, and government get together at the Bohemian Grove at this encampment, and some unusual things go on. Now, some of those things are kind of fun to talk about. They're a little bit odd. Nobody really cares except that it's, you know, sort of fun to tease about it. But there are some serious concerns about this two-week all-male encampment and the people who are participants in this encampment and what takes place at the Bohemian Grove. Joining us right now, because the encampment, <clears throat> excuse me, is actually beginning now, the, uh, they're, they're, the protests are actually, the big protest is going to be tomorrow. Uh, but they're, uh, they're gathering. You may see the, uh, the private jets that are flying in, I'm sure you do, to the private airports uh, as they're making their way to the, the beautiful, beautiful site of the Bohemian Grove. Uh, we all know this is going on, but do we know what's really going on? Ralph Nader joins us. Ralph, of course, is a long, long, long time consumer advocate. He is the man who's on our side. He's a former presidential candidate. He is an author. His most recent book is The Good Fight, Declare Your Independence and Close the Democracy Gap. And he joins us on the Pat Thurston Show. Mr. Nader, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Pat. It's a pleasure. You know, it sounds to me like your new book, and I, I knew very little about it until this morning, and I sort of read up on, on the book. It sounds like this is a, it's a perfect book. It goes hand in hand with a discussion of what's going on at the Bohemian Grove and why it's so important that we declare our independence and close the democracy gap. Yes, because, you know, our country was designed to be uh, subject to the sovereignty of the people. You know, the preamble of the Constitution starts, we the people, not we the corporation. And what's happened uh, year after year, incrementally, we have allowed uh, giant multinational corporations to uh, take over our government. I mean, there isn't a department or agency here in Washington that isn't overwhelmingly controlled inside with former uh, corporate executives getting appointments to Department of Treasury, Department of Defense, Department of Interior, Agriculture, and outside with, I guess the latest figure is 32,000 full-time corporate lobbyists. Isn't that amazing? And uh, they're not spending their day watching the Washington Monument. And 9,000 political action committees pumping uh, what uh, Jesse Unra in California once called the mother's milk of politics, money into the coffers of the White House and the Congress. So uh, this Bohemian Grove is an extraordinary opp opportunity for groups like the Bohemian Grove Action Network because th these, these corporate and political rulers uh, have always hidden behind institutions with rather impersonal names. Uh, for example, uh, IBM, uh, GM, uh, these kinds of acronyms take away the anthropomorphic quality that gets people to relate to, hey, this is who's ruling us. I mean, 100 years ago, you walked into a bar in uh, Brooklyn, and you ask anyone who's running this country, they'll tell you, J.P. Morgan, uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Carnegie, uh, uh, Jay Gould. But it's become very impersonal now behind these artificial entities uh, called multinational corporations, big banks, big oil companies, big drug companies, big auto companies, chemical companies, who, uh, you know, have no longer any allegiance to any country or community other than control them or abandon them as they see fit, like corporate globalization and NAFTA and WTO facilitate. Now you get the Bohemian Grove and uh, all this impersonality stripped away. And in this 2,700 yeah. acres, yeah, yeah, of redwoods, uh, you've got, you know, uh, hugely powerful people, uh, military, judiciary, corporate, uh, basically almost in loyance cloth. Uh, you know, they're, 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 they're shedding all their inhibitions. They're drinking, many of them like crazy. They're prancing around with pranks and uh, uh, duets and uh, uh, plays. They pride you know, themselves on peeing on trees. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like, get rid of all your inhibitions, let the stress leak away. Right. And, uh, Burn care, cremate care. That's, that's one of the big rituals, their cremation of care. That's how they started out. Of dull care. 
Pardon me? Yeah, the cremation of dull care, they say. Oh, that's right, dull care. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and of course, the groups protesting outside at the gates are, are having signs, the resurrection of care. I mean, you, you can be sure that inside this grove, they're not planning the salvation of Africa, uh, abolition of poverty, uh, universal health care, a living wage for people working their heads off to support their families on measly uh, wages like Walmart. No, what are they doing? Well, they're getting to know each other, to reacquaint themselves from last year, and to see each other in unhibit, uninhibited poses that develops a kind of personal cement that further tightens the ruling cliques. Uh, and, of course, they're not just from the U.S., they're from Western countries, etc. Now, having said that, I think it is grossly inappropriate for anybody on the judiciary, judges, to ever go there. Uh, Justice Antonin Scalia has been known to be a visitor there. That is improper. Uh, I don't think anybody in government should ever go to an exclusive, corporate-dominated, uh, no trespass confab because it it puts into doubt the public trust that we would like to impose in our public servants and that holds true for any military there should be no military people on active duty generals admirals ever going there there should be no cabinet secretaries on active duty ever going there and I think the Bohemian uh, Grove uh, Action Network has got to make a much greater deal of this it isn't just the political and corporate ruling classes meeting privately there in sort of bizarre circumstances and rituals, uh, it's uh, inappropriate for anybody paid by the taxpayer as a judge, as a member of Congress, or as an executive branch official to go into that Bohemian Grove complex. Well, ad additionally, not only are they going in and they're tightening their relationships, but there are these lakeside talks. And the nature of these lakeside talks and the people who are, are presenting these lakeside talks, these are uh, unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of glancing through the list here right now, and I happened to stop on about 10 years ago when uh, Robert Novak, Alex J. Mandel, Executive Vice President of AT&T, Newt Gingrich, and George Bush Sr. were all speakers uh, presenting lakeside talks. But it goes, I mean, as far as they have started keeping track of these things, one of the first ones was presented by um, Edward Teller. Uh, and it was on uh, uh, nuclear energy. Uh, the, I mean, the, the types of commercial opportunities in space, the next decade, the global economy, constantly the global economy and the World Bank and th that sort of thing are, are focused in many of these lakeside talks. So they say no uh, weaving spiders, web your whatever they do, you know, weave your webs here or whatever it is. But they do. I mean, they're looking at actual things that become United States policy, but there is no public scrutiny over this. Exactly. It's not just a you know, manifestation of the greedy classes. It's, uh, it's planning the future uh, of billions of people. I mean, they, these are people who shuttle back and forth between Wall Street and Washington, literally and figuratively, uh, London, Tokyo. And they... Uh, they are engaged in strategic planning, and this is one of their uninhibited uh, sessions uh, where they begin trading ideas and policies as to how they're going to plan the environment of the earth, the politics of the earth, the military weaponry of the earth, the financial wheeling and dealing of the earth, uh, how they're going to market uh, what kind of food, uh, how they're going to take over the genetic inheritance of the earth, uh, Monsanto style. So, you know. You can't give it enough attention, uh, yeah. Pat. You I, cannot give it. Now, out east, there isn't that much knowledge about the Bohemian Grove. I mean, uh, the people in California understand what's going on and have written and spoken about it much more than out east, although I bet you the majority of the people there are east of the Mississippi, from east of the Mississippi. I think you're exactly right. But one thing that uh, the, the protests that take place there, I, I don't see that the protests themselves are going to uh, change any of the ten attendees' minds uh, in terms of going to the, the Grove. I don't think it's going to necessarily raise the consciousness of these men.